Hey everybody, my name is Alex McGregor and on today's video I'm going to show you how to make star trail time lapses like the one you just saw. So star trails are a really fun way of photographing the night sky, especially with a nice landscape. And you can do it when there's a little bit of a moon. You don't always have to be shooting the Milky Way. It gives you a lot of options. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to set up your camera and process your images all the way from start to finish in order to make that really cool comet effect star trail like we just saw. So the three programs I'm gonna be using today is LR Time Lapse, Lightroom, and the most important program is StarStacks. So StarStacks is a program that'll give you the files with those little comments on them that you can then turn into the time lapse. So if you use different programs for creating time lapses or for editing and managing your photos, that's just fine. Um, you don't need Lightroom or LR time lapse, but they're the ones that I enjoy using. The most important one here is StarStacks. So let's talk about how you want to set up your camera to capture the images that you're going to combine. Really any camera can create these images. You just need to be able to take a nice exposure of the stars. And the most important thing is that you don't want to overexpose because you'll blow out any color detail that you get in the stars. So getting your exposure right is important. This will require taking a few test frames. I usually like to go near or a little over the rule of 500 to tell me how fast of a shutter speed I can have because when we're making the star trails and the time lapses we don't need perfectly pinpoint stars having a little bit of streaking is just fine and I like how it looks when I can lower my ISO a little bit and get a nice cleaner image so getting your proper exposure is the most important thing but I can't tell you what that is because you're shooting with a moon or all kinds of different circumstances your exposure will be different just make sure you are using the histogram on the back of your camera and judging what your proper exposure is you want a nice peak near the center and you don't want uh, anything clipping so nothing too far over to the right side now how to set up your camera on most modern cameras they have a built-in intervalometer I know on my Canon R5 it is in the camera red menu uh, menu option six and there is the interval timer if you click on it you can enable it and you can hit the info button to set the details so here's where you're going to set how long of a space between your images you want to take now I like to set my exposures in the manual exposure mode in my camera for this time lapse I'm going to show you I was taking 10 second images so I dial in 10 seconds on my camera and then all I'm doing on my interval timer is actually setting the interval and I want as short of a gap between images as possible. So I'm going to set my interval to one second and then I'm not going to set anything of a delay or anything of a timer. Now as far as number of shots that's really up to you. If you want to make a time lapse and you want it to be about 30 frames per second the math is super easy. You need 300 images to make a 10 second time lapse at 30 frames per second. If you go to 24 frames per second, those 300 images will extend a bit further, but that is a good judge. I usually go for like a minimum of 300, but it really depends on how much time you have out there at night. When I set this up, I was photographing this mountain with a different camera. So I just set it to unlimited and let it run as long as I was out there. So you need to make sure you know how to focus your stars or focus your camera on the stars. If you need any help with that, I go over it in this video right here. The next thing you need is a good solid tripod and really any tripod will do. You just wanna make sure that uh, it's not shaky and it's not gonna get blown over somehow. I did a video about my couple of favorite tripods and you can check those out in that video. Now, if you're working with an older camera that doesn't have a built-in intervalometer, you can pick up a really cheap one like this. This is the newer EZ-AC1 and it works a lot like the intervalometer inside of your camera and it's nice plugs right in you can also get a wireless version of this which is good because then you can kind of monitor 
the remote and make sure it's still firing from the warmth of your car. But the settings are the same. I set my delay and my timer to zero, my interval to one, and my shot count to whatever you want your shot count to be. And then it just takes some patience. You need to let your camera capture all of the images and the best thing you can do is get out away from any roads or light sources that might be flashing through your frame. You want as consistent of lighting on your foreground scene and even your sky as possible. This will help you to eliminate any flicker that you might get in your images. And let her run, capture the images, and come on home and hop on the computer, which is what we're going to do now. So I've already loaded all of my images into Lightroom and this is the part of the video where your specific style might be different than mine, but I'm going to run them through LR, Timelapse, Lightroom, and then take those into Star Stacks and bring them from Star Stacks back into LR Timelapse. So this is not a tutorial on LR Timelapse. I'm just gonna show you really quickly how I do it. So one of the most crucial features of LR Timelapse is it gives you the ability to ramp exposure or just have really consistent synced exposures. And for Star Trail time lapses, I'm going for the consistency. So I'm gonna make three keyframes, save them, and then edit those keyframes in Lightroom so that the exposure stays consistent all the way through. All right, now we are in Lightroom. First thing you can see that I need to correct is the color because I shot it on the wrong white balance, but I'm just gonna dra grab my dropper in Lightroom, click there on the snow, and that is pretty good. It's I'm gonna bump up my vibrance and saturation to see. I'd rather most of this blue tone and the snow be gone. I like it to look a little warmer, so about there is good. And then I might bring down my tint a little bit have a nice yellow cast because this yellow cast on the mountain is coming from the town that sits below it so that looks pretty natural to me we'll bring these back down i want to add some punchiness to it so i'm going to drop my blacks i'm going to increase my whites just a little bit don't want to go too far with that i'm also going to add some contrast here i like to usually drop my texture for astro shots but here we're going to bump texture and clarity just slightly and maybe a touch of dehaze um next thing you notice there's a pretty decent vignette here so i'm going to come down to my profile correction make sure that's on and here i'm going to adjust the vignette just a little bit a little bit more now there's a pretty strong purple hue it seems like so i'm going to drop the purple saturation yeah you can see it on the mountain there drop that and probably drop the magenta yeah we don't need too much of that going on i'm also going to drop the luminance of the purple to darken this mountain up a little bit now i'm going to add a little more contrast with the tone curve and i also want to do some noise reduction so i'm going to do that by coming down to the luminance here uh, I'm going to turn off the sharpening because I don't want to be sharpening any of the noise and raise my luminance to about 15. Now let's go to 20. This is kind of a noisy image, but that'll give me a really nice starting point. Now I can go ahead and sync these through all of my edits by selecting them all and hit sync right here. Now we can go to our next images and make sure we like how they're looking. That one looks fine. Now here, we're starting to get a little bit of blue in the white balance, so I'm going to raise that back up just a little. Okay, now I like how all of my images are working, so I will select them all, go to Metadata, and hit Save Metadata to Files. Now I'm gonna hop back into Lightroom Time Lapse, reload them, and this, with the auto transition here, will sync all of those edits through all of the frames. So everything will be super consistent. All right, now we see all of those edits are synced through those. So now I'm gonna go back into Lightroom, click here on the LRT full sequence, go to my grid mode. I'm going to hit Command A and go up to metadata and do read metadata from files. So now we'll notice it'll take a little bit of time, but we'll notice all of these little uh, thumbnails will start to reflect the 
keyframe that's next to them. Okay, now that that is done, all of these images are synced. I can export these frames and I'm actually going to export them back into LR time lapse and create a time lapse video without the little comments. But in doing so, I'm creating the JPEG files that I'll then take and put them into star stacks to get that final really cool time lapse. So in here, LR time lapse is really cool because it has its own uh, export plugin. And I'm not going to go over these settings. That's for a different video. But I'm going to choose my output location and use my last render settings. All of that will be discussed later. And I'm going to hit export. Now this process is going to take a little while. So I'm going to turn you off and I will sip my coffee and I'll see you guys in a little bit. Okay, now uh, LR time lapse is finished making that time lapse of all those single still images. So here is what it looks like just running those images through LR time lapse. Now let's spice it up a little bit by running it through Star Stacks. So here I have the Star Stacks program open and I can find my photos that LR time lapse made. I put them into the Princeton 85 time lapse and they made this subfolder called LRT Princeton 85 TL and you see all of these JPEG images that are saved in there. So I can command or yeah, command A, select them all and drag them and drop them right into star stacks. So in Star Stacks, we have all of our images loaded up on the left and our blending preferences on the right. Now, if we want to just make it look like the stars are starting where they are and they make consistent lines all the way through, we can leave the blending mode just to lighten. But if we want to make those little comets, the streaks to make it feel like it has a little bit more motion to it, we're going to turn on comet mode here. Now comet mode is really nice, but it can be kind of tricky to know exactly how long to keep these trails to make the stars look good. And it seems like it's a little bit different for every lens and every time I shoot. So I want to make sure I test out the star trail lengths, the comet tail lengths before I commit to saving every step because down here in cumulative image saving, you want to make sure you click save after each step and this will save the progress. So the comet will show it getting bigger and bigger and it'll save every different step into a new JPEG. And then you can run those JPEGs into that time-lapse machine, time-lapse program again. But I don't want to do this because it takes a lot more computer power and it takes a lot longer. If the comet trails are too long or too short, it just won't look cool. So I want to preview it first. So I am not going to save after each step. I am just going to leave my comet trails to the standard that it automatically selects and I'm going to hit start processing. Now this is going to run it through. Yeah, and I already don't love it. Those, those are too long, so I'm gonna hit stop. I don't like my comments being that long, so I'm gonna make my trail shorter just by going down to that one and I'm going to run it again. Okay, now those comments aren't quite as long as I'd like, so I am going to make it just a little bit longer, right in the middle of those two. And I'm gonna hit process. Mm, yeah, I'd still prefer them just a little bit longer. So I'm gonna stop it, bring them up a little bit to there, and hit preview. It's funny, but this is why I'm doing it so many times. I like that, but I I want it a little bit longer. All right, up just a bit to that tick. Preview. That's really close. Because it still looks like stars, not like full trails. And the, you see how the airplanes kind of disappear. That's not bad. I'm gonna stop it again. I'm gonna go one little micro move up, hit preview. One more time, one more time, one more time, one more time. Just a one micro move up, preview. 
Oh, did I hit reverse? Oh, I did. I hit process and reverse order, which is kind of cool. It gives it a totally different feeling, but that's not, that's not what we want. All right. Processing in the right order. Oh, yeah. I think I really like those trails just like they are. Okay, so I'm going to stop this process again, and now I'm going to hit save after each step here. And I'm going to choose my location. I want them all to be saved. Now I have the cumulative saving selected, save after each step. I have JPEG selected, because that'll be way easier to process. Start at zero and yeah, we're ready to go. So now I can hit process and see how it's going slower. So this is gonna take a little bit because it is saving each photo at each single step, but this will give us those still images that we need to process into our final image. So we're just gonna let this run for a little bit. All right, now all of our blending is done. You can see how nice those comments look sitting over the mountain. So I'm gonna go back into Lightroom and I'm gonna import all of the files that we just made. Now, once this import is finished, I won't have to run it through LR time-lapse to like batch process the exposures, but I am gonna use LR time-lapse to render my final time-lapse. It just does a really clean job with it. So this is my workflow through it, and I think it's pretty clean. You definitely have to do a couple of export steps, a couple of renderings, but I think it the result is one of the cleanest that time lapse is possible because LR time lapse is just so good at it. Um, you can run it through something like Premiere Pro, and I just don't love how Premiere Pro actually handles time lapses. They usually end up just kind of messy and muddy and not quite as clean, especially with higher ISO images. So I am going to send all of these through LR time lapse again by hitting Command A export and I am going to leave just the exact same uh, setting here. So it'll run it through LR time lapse again, hitting export and I will, I'm gonna wrap this video up now. So the in summary, you take all of your images with that intervalometer, take them all on manual and manual white balance and do one second between the images and expose it so that you have little star trails is okay. Um, just try to get your ISO down because the ISO will show up, especially in the corners if it's too noisy. And then bring all of those images into Lightroom and process that I process them through Lightroom time lapse and create one new complete series of images with all of my edits baked into the JPEGs. Then I take all of those JPEGs that I run through LR time lapse, bring them into Star Stacks. Don't save after each step until you make sure that you like the length of comet trail that you're getting. And then once you've pre-processed the image and got that nice time comet trail length, then hit that save after each step, which will create a whole new series of JPEGs. Bring those JPEGs into Lightroom and then export them into LR time-lapse or your favorite time-lapse processing software. Uh, if you guys have found this video helpful, please give me the thumbs up. Subscribe for more. I'm doing a lot of astro vlogs along with some astro tutorials on this channel. If you'd like to get any of the software I showed here, I'm going to leave links down for everything down in the description of this video. I also have links for all of the gear that I use to capture these images. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will catch you on the next video.